Today I've got a problem from TBO's problem solving booklet. We have a right angle triangle which has all of its side lengths integers. If the length of the perimeter equals the area, find all such triangles. Interesting. Uh, this is taken, as I say, from TBO's problem solving booklet, which is used to help students prepare for Oxford and Cambridge mathematics interviews. So let's dive in with this one. Let's draw on an arbitrary right angle triangle. So something like this. There's a right angle, and we'll call the side lengths A, B, and C. Okay, what do we know? We have A, B, and C are integers, and obviously positive integers here. And we're told that the perimeter equals the area. So the perimeter is just half A, oh, sorry, it's A plus B plus C, and the area is a half A, B. And of course, this is a right angle triangle, so everybody's favorite theorem, Pythagoras' theorem, is going to come into play here. Okay, and we're supposed to find all such triangles. And you might think, hold on a second, we've got three unknowns here, but only two equations. But I promise everything will turn out to be super, super nice. Okay, I can see I've got lots of A's and B's here and only a couple of C's. Maybe I'm going to make C the subject of the first equation, square both sides, and then I can use that to substitute into the second. So if I have C equals um, a half AB minus A plus B, and now if I square this, I get C squared equals a quarter A squared B squared minus, so two lots of this times this, which will be A B, A plus B, and then plus A plus B squared, which is A squared plus 2A B plus B squared. Okay, amazing. I get this here. And kind of using the fact that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I can cancel that with that and that. That's quite nice. Okay, cool. I'm going to multiply by four to get rid of this fraction here. So I'm going to get zero equals a squared b squared minus four a b times a plus b plus eight a b, like so. And I notice that everything on the right hand side has a common factor of a b. Let's divide by that. So we get zero equals a b minus four times a plus b plus two. Uh, sorry, not plus two, plus eight, like so. And now you may wonder, well, how? What do I do with this? Well, notice that if I'm, I'm going to do something a bit interesting on both sides, I'm just going to add 8 on both sides. So this side becomes 8, and this side becomes 16. Why have I done that? Well, now the left hand, uh, the right hand side, so it factorizes super nicely. This is just a minus 4 times b minus 4 equals 8. I can just verify that by expanding this. But now we're going to remember that a and b were just integers. And so that means a minus 4 and b minus 4 are just integers as well, and they multiply to 8. So there's a few possibilities here. Either this is 8, this is 1, this is 4, this is 2, this is 2, this is 4, and or well, this is 1, and this is 8. And now you may wonder, well, what about negatives here? Thankfully, we don't really need to worry about negatives, because if these were two negative numbers, yes, they could multiply to 8. Um, but the only way that would be possible is if, let's say, this was minus 8, for example, and this was minus 1. But then a here would have to be minus 4, so a can't be negative. Uh, well, what about 4 and 2? Well, if this was minus 4 and this was minus 2, well, a would have to be 0, and that's not allowed either. So thankfully, we don't need to worry about negatives. We can just have a look at each of these. So if a, is, um, a minus 4 is 8, we get a equals um, 12, and b will then equal 5. If a minus 4 is 4, we're going to get a equals 8 and b equals 6. And then these two guys are just going to be them swapped around. So there's four possible triangles here. And I guess these guys are the same as those guys. So in reality, there's only two possible triangles. One where a is 12, b is 5, which would make c 13. And one where a is 8, b is 6, and making uh, c 10. Um, a really interesting question. I'm not sure if it's really suitable for an interview, in my honest opinion, because it does feel kind of intuitive in the sense you kind of just follow your nose um, in solving these simultaneous equations. But maybe it could seem a little daunting. This trick at the end here is quite nice. Maybe you haven't seen that before of uh, kind of adding something to both sides to make it factorize nicely. Anyway, best of luck if you have got your Oxford and uh, Oxford slash Cambridge interview this week or next week. A lot of my students have. In fact, some of them have theirs as early as Monday. So best of luck if you are one of those students. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.